Bronze swords, bronze statues, bronze tools. Archaeologists keep finding them intact, recognizable, sometimes even beautiful. Meanwhile, iron objects from the same or later periods often show up as flaky stains, reddish clumps, or nothing at all. This isn't luck, and it isn't mystery. It's chemistry, economics, and ancient decision-making colliding across thousands of years. All that and more right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the science, because metals are honest. Bronze is mostly copper, usually mixed with tin. When copper is buried, it reacts with oxygen and moisture to form a thin layer of corrosion called a patina. That green or brown surface is stable. It seals the metal beneath it. Once it forms, the reaction slows down dramatically. The bronze underneath stays solid, sometimes for millennia. Iron behaves very differently. When iron reacts with oxygen and water, it creates rust, which is not stable. Rust flakes, cracks, and falls away. Each layer exposes fresh iron underneath, which then rusts again. The process repeats until the metal is gone. Bronze corrodes and stops. Iron corrodes and keeps going. That single difference explains a huge amount of what archaeologists see. So when a bronze axe and an iron knife are buried side by side, Centuries later, the bronze axe might still look like an axe, while the iron knife may exist only as a rusty shadow in the soil. Archaeologists sometimes identify iron objects only because bronze fittings or wood impressions survived around them. Now zoom out to history. Bronze wasn't just durable, it was valuable. Copper was common enough, but tin was rare. Tin sources were limited and often far away. This meant bronze required trade networks, planning, and investment. Societies that worked bronze were plugged into long-distance exchange systems. Bronze objects mattered. They were reused, repaired, melted down, and stored carefully. Iron, by contrast, is everywhere. Iron ore is abundant. Once people learned how to smelt it properly, iron became cheap and scalable. That made it revolutionary, but also disposable. Iron tools were used hard, discarded, recycled, or left to rot. Fewer iron objects were treated as ceremonial or symbolic in their earliest phases, so fewer were protected from decay. In the Bronze Age, bronze was the best metal available. It was easier to cast than iron, required lower temperatures, and could be poured into molds. This made it ideal for weapons, armor, tools, and art. Bronze swords were sharp enough, bronze helmets worked, bronze chisels shaped stone. Entire civilizations were built around this material. Iron eventually replaced bronze not because it lasted longer, but because it performed better when forged into steel. Iron with carbon could hold an edge longer and flex without snapping. But early ironworking was inconsistent. Many early iron objects were brittle or soft. Bronze, though older, was predictable and reliable. This is why some ancient bronze artifacts are stunningly intact. Musical instruments, statues, mirrors, ritual vessels, even delicate ornaments have survived. A thin bronze trumpet from Iron Age Europe survived buried for 2,000 years. Nearby iron objects from the same site corroded into nothing more than lumps. In ancient China, massive bronze ritual vessels survived almost untouched, while early iron tools often disintegrated. In the Mediterranean, bronze helmets and greaves remain recognizable, while iron spearheads vanish. Across cultures, the pattern repeats. There's also the environment. Soil chemistry matters. Wet, salty, or acidic soils accelerate iron corrosion. Bronze handles these conditions better. In shipwrecks, iron fittings disappear fast while bronze bells and cannons survive. Underwater archaeology is basically a victory parade for copper alloys. Another factor is recycling. Bronze was valuable enough that people hoarded it. Broken bronze objects were melted down. That means many bronze items found today were deliberately buried, lost suddenly, or placed in graves. 
iron, being cheaper, was recycled aggressively. If an iron object wasn't reused, it probably rusted away. So was bronze better than iron? Not exactly. Bronze lasted longer underground. Iron performed better in daily life once steel arrived. Each metal solved different problems at different times. The archaeological record favors bronze not because ancient people preferred it forever, but because chemistry preserved it better. This creates a distorted picture of the past. We see bronze everywhere and assume it dominated. In reality, entire iron-based economies existed that left little behind. The Iron Age is named for a material that often didn't survive its own success. In the end, bronze wins the archaeological survival game because it forms a protective skin, because it was valuable, and because people treated it like something worth keeping. Iron changed the world, but bronze stuck around long enough to tell its story. That difference matters. Archaeology is not a perfect record of the past. What survives feels important. What disappears feels insignificant. Bronze didn't dominate forever. It simply endured longer. This is why museums glow with green and gold instead of red and brown. Bronze statues still stand. Helmets still look like helmets. Iron often survives only as rust stains or fragile shells. We don't see iron's greatness because iron was used until it was gone. Bronze was prestige, iron was labor, one was treasured, the other was consumed. So when you look at an ancient bronze object behind glass, remember this. You're not just seeing better preservation. You're seeing chemistry and human values working together. A metal that resisted decay and a culture that believed it was worth preserving. There's also a quiet irony here. The Iron Age is named after a material that rarely survives, while the Bronze Age is remembered through objects you can still hold, weigh, and study. History, in a way, is written by the materials that refuse to disappear. That stubbornness shapes how we imagine the past. What lasts becomes symbolic. What decays becomes invisible. Bronze didn't just outlive iron underground, it outlived it in memory. That's why ancient bronze still speaks clearly across thousands of years, while ancient iron whispers, if it speaks at all. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.